I'm Dr. Rach, naturopath and GP, and we're here today at Utopia Women's Wellness, and lucky enough to be speaking with the beautiful Melissa Ambrosini. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much here. for having me. And you've just um, spoken for an hour to a huge crowd of gorgeous women who sat in their edge of their seat listening to your message. So yeah. that um, I just love to hear. I mean, we can have a, a quick chat about your history and your story, but the truthfulness and the honesty and the way that you can just tell it exactly how it is. And I actually saw one of the ladies outside the door saying, oh, I wish I had that wisdom at that age. Mm. You know, when you get to that point, you think, oh, that mean girl just talks and talks and talks all day. Yeah. So your session was called The Mean Girl. It was called Mastering Your Mean Girl, Great. yes, which I've got a book coming out next year. Beautiful. Titled the same thing. Great. So, yeah, it's... You know, to see so many, I think there was about 500 or 600 people in that room, mm -hmm. to see so many women so willing and open to learn is just so beautiful. It really makes me mm -hmm. excited. You can see you're passionate. Mm -hmm. just love that. Changing mm -hmm. people's lives is really, really awesome. But So coming from a, a very um, appearance-based um, background, so yes. dancing, and tell yeah. us about that. So I started dancing when I was three mm. and I absolutely loved it and um, when I got into high school I started doing acting and singing and performing really became part of my life and when everyone was working out what they wanted to do after school I, su I applied for university to do a Bachelor of Business mm. and just mainly to appease my mm. school teachers but I never really had that deep yearning to do it. I always wanted to be on stage. Mm. So I went to one of the best performing arts colleges in Sydney. So I was 17 when I finished school. I moved to Sydney because I got accepted into this college, which was a year long yeah. um, program. Ooh. And I went to NIDA to do acting as yeah. well. And performing was my life. Mm. You know, I, it took me all over the world. I danced at the Moulin Rouge in Paris Gorgeous. for a year. I moved to London for two years. Mm. Um, but after a while, it really started to eat away at me. Mm. There's only so many auditions and castings that you go to when you get told, no, you're not skinny enough, you're, not, you're too big, your eyes are too close together. You're, you know, it's, and as much as you walk away and you try to be that stronger person and go, you know, it just wasn't my gig. Mm -hmm. Or they, maybe they wanted a blonde. Mm -hmm. Even though you can say that, it does still eat away at you. Yeah. And years and years of it, mm -hmm. chipping away at your soul, mm -hmm. there's no wonder I ended up having quite a dramatic wake up call. Mm -hmm. Because a big health event. A big it? health Very event. Well. Yeah. And through that time, I mean, superficially, that sounds like the perfect life, gorgeous, traveling, dancing, like how wonderful, but that criticism and slowly it becomes self-torture, doesn't it? It becomes yeah. self-hatred and loathing. And You mentioned depression and eating disorders. Yeah. And yeah, tell us how you moved from that. What did you do to move from that to wellness? And that's what our message is today. Well... You know, it was only a matter of time before that chipping away at my soul really um, took a turn. Mm -hmm. And then I, I had a very big wake up call where I was in hospital with, I had thyroid problems, mm -hmm. adrenal fatigue, depression, an eating disorder, mm -hmm. so many vitamin and mineral deficiencies. I had eczema all over my body, acne, um, and I got a serious case of the cold sore virus. Yeah. So I had cold sores all over my face, in my mouth and down my throat, like even up under my eyes and everywhere. And the, the virus was so intense that it had attacked my entire body. Yeah. So I was in hospital and with this cocktail of yeah. things going on for me, I had high levels of mercury and yeah. all sorts of things. Um, I realized that, you know, sorry the doctor came in and he kind of plonked this tray of drugs in front of me mm. and said you have to take this indefinitely mm. and I knew deep down that that wasn't good enough for me mm. I knew that there had to be another way so I started to explore holistic medicine mm. and nutrition and healing the body naturally with food. Good. So I went and studied holistic nutrition mm. and yoga, mm. meditation, acuenergetics, which is energy healing. 
And slowly my body started to heal, mm. not overnight. It took me many years. Mm. But slowly I got off all of these drugs that I was on and painkillers and you know, my thyroid got better, my fatigue got better, my acne cleared up, mm. the eczema cleared up. I used to have it all over my arms. Like mm. everything started to get better. So, yeah. you know, for me, I was like, this is, you know, this is amazing. It's incredible. It's incredible. It? It's, yeah. it's, it's hard to believe until you see it, experience it. And, you know, I've got case after case of that as well. But, exactly. but I hear when you say you made these choices, yoga, or meditation, these are all self-loving yes. actions, aren't they? Yeah. So that's the key. Totally. Mm. So I, I started doing all of these things and meditating and yoga and all of these incredible things. But I realized that I still had some detrimental thoughts mm. going on. So that's where I came up with the concept of the mean girl. And does, does yours have a name? Did well, no, no, I just named her Mean Girl. <laughs> I can see her. She's like me, like a yeah. mini version of me in like a little red pitchfork oh, outfit. Yeah. <laughs> like pitchfork and a little red devil outfit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And she, you know, she's, that's just our ego. And our ego is mm. designed to keep us in fear and, mm. and suffering. And initially it was for safety. Exactly. Be careful, watch out. This is a, and that's fine. But when you know you're not in safety anymore, genetically we're not yeah. fighting battles. Exactly. You know, we have a normal life day to live yep. and you have to learn and be aware and be able to quiet that. And so you've done exactly. a beautiful job to yeah. do that. Yeah. And I'm, you know, no, even though what I went through was incredibly hard mm -hmm. and so dark at times, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change it for the world because I'm so grateful that I got my wake up call early. Mm -hmm because it's allowed me to live the most rewarding life that I have now. And the acting, and you've got that stage yep. now, and you see these women there with tears streaming down their faces thanking you, yep. you know, for making that change and giving them the message. So yeah. can't wait to see the book. Thank so you. early next year? Probably around mid next year. We're yeah. hoping to do a, a Australian release first. Good. at the start of the year and then American at the end of the year. Okay. So it just depends. So it's all in the works at the right. moment. All right. Mm. And so we can find Melissa at your website. Yes. And it's just melissaambrosini.com. .com. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So shout out and say hi and have a look out for the book for next year. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Lady. It's beautiful to talk. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you.